What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the SEMA slash TA Daniel Defense M4 PDW SBR CGS GBBR officially licensed by EMG Review. Now with that excessive amount of acronyms out the way let's jump in to the usual disclosures. This is an airsoft toy. This is not a real firearm. There are no real firearms in this video or in any of my videos. This video was filmed in a safe and secure location with no risk to other persons or property as per YouTube guidelines. And this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. I bought this with my own money and these are my own honest and genuine opinions based on my own experiences with this awesome airsoft product. Now, with all that out of the way, Let's jump in. Okay, so let's start by delving into what is the DDM4 PDW. Well, as the name suggests, this is made by Daniel Defense and based off of their M4 platform and is their personal defense weapon or SBR, depending on which way you look at it. And you will need an SBR tax stamp either way if you want to run this with a proper stock. Now, in the real steel world, this was actually released at Shot Show 2020 and took the world by storm since then. Chambered in the almighty 300 blackout round, the same round as the SIG Rattler, this was basically aimed at taking the SIG's backpack gun of choice moniker away from it and put that crown on Daniel Defense's head. And to be honest with you, we should. It really is a beautiful piece of kit. Now, in Airsoft, we've been waiting forever to get a fully complete Daniel Defense rifle out the box in gas blowback. In AEG, we waited until 2022 when ICS released their officially licensed DDM4 using the ICS split gearbox and spiral alert, garbage. Basically, I owned the Hera Arms, which came out just prior, and to be honest with you, their split gearboxes are really naff. The upper and lower receiver likes to just become so loosey-goosey that it can't even register or cycle properly. It, is, it was just a nightmare. Cool idea, poor execution. I believe G&G have taken up the split gearbox idea now. We'll have to wait and see with that. Now, in gas blowback, like I say, until now, there has been nothing. You could buy parts for a GHK slash VFC, such as a receiver, and then go buy handguard. And at the time, by the time you bought all that and the donor weapon to transplant all the internals into, you're basically spending more than what it would cost you to get the real rifle anyway. So again, the wait continued up until the end of 2023, when SEMA and T8 came into the gas blowback market with the CGS system, which you see here. Now, as we all know, SEMA are a awesome mid-range, entry-level at worst for their AEGs but they've never made a gas blowback. And not being stupid, when they were checking the bucks in the beginning of 2020, they knew that gas blowback is on the rise. It's a market they want to get into, but the cost of developing a reliable and cool system is going to take multi-millions of dollars, and it's something they didn't really want to invest in like that. It's out their price range straight away. So they will look for the partner side of things. And that's where T8 came in. Ever since the Marui MWS Z system um, was released with their M4A1, T8 has been there as an aftermarket supplier of parts, giving you enhanced internals such as steel hammers, etc., full fire control groups, and all the other little bits that you would need to get running from buffers to um, gas seals on the mag to whole magazines. And their system basically was awesome but they wanted to make a full complete weapon themselves. And again, now you get back into the having to build a body and get the licensing. It's such an expensive endeavor. It takes the two companies getting the stars aligned and merging together to release this product that we see here today, along with the Noveski M4 and the Mark 18, as well as the full-size Daniel Defense, which came out at the intermittent times throughout 2023. Now, the next question people are going to ask, is this a clone of the Marui system then? Well, short answer, no. Long answer, watch the video and you'll find out. So, with that, let's see how they've done. Let's do what we always do. Let's start the rear, 
and work our way forward. Okay, so before we jump in, I am going to state there are a few not clone correct parts on this from SEMA slash T8 that they've consciously made in order to keep the cost down to a more affordable replica price. Is it a bad thing? No. Do I prefer these parts? Yes. For ease and simplicity? Yes. Now, the first one is obviously the stock. The real steel one will come with a wire telescoping stock or brace, depending on which version you purchase, whereas this Airsoft will come with a compact sock mod stock. Now, if I pull a full-size one out, here's my VFC, and as you can see, it is pretty much two-thirds the length, and yeah, there are some differences there, but this is being the old B5, and this being the modern version of it. But outside of that, they work the same. Now, this is, like saying the more modern ergonomic version, and you can get a lovely cheat weld on this. It's really nice. It is five position, and it does mount to a mil-spec diameter buffer tube, so you can put this on any AR-15 that you wish that uses a buffer tube, and you can put any other stock on this if you wish. I kind of like it. It's grown on me. At first, I really wanted the wire stock, but then it was kind of like, no, I understand it, and it's fine. There is very little wobble or play, just very slight. You're not going to know it and bother about it. You do get your ambidextrous QD sling mount, which is obviously mirrored on both sides. You do get your traditional sling, and you do get a wider, more ergonomic, soft rubber butt pad here that's removable with these two hex screws. And as you can see, ergonomic with the contour here at the bottom. Now, as I said, this is mounted to a mil-spec buffer tube to the dimensions, but not the length. The buffer tube ends around about here. Okay, it's pretty short and it is the PDW one. That helps it with the rate of fire on this, which you will see in the, in the firing test. And like I say, internally, it is milled out to the dimensions that T8 specifically require for their buffer system, which is a short stroke buffer kit in here. Now, with that done, we can move to the castle nut. The castle nut is Daniel Defense's steel castle nut, along with their single point sling, which is an anti-rotation sling point it's really good you can lock it to either the left side or the left side or the right side you choose now on the top we do have the daniel defense grip and rip charging handle i love how these are all becoming how would you say different cool names you have the noveski um, super badass and you have the daniel defense grip and rip now, as you can see, you do get the laser etching Daniel Defense in there, and this is Marui spec, so this will fit in any Marui, and vice versa on this. Now, moving it down, we can get to the laser markings here, which are DDM4, PDW, and we do have the grip. Now, the grip is a perfect replica of the Daniel Defense's Tornado grip. You do have the Daniel Defense logo here on the bottom plate, and it does come with the Daniel Defense Tornado trigger guard fully milled and how say molded in to this grip. It's very nice, it's very rigid, there's no play. Now you do get the finger grooves cut in here at the top and here. Now, if you don't like this, you can swap it out for any AR-15 pistol grip. You just swap that out and you will need to change the little trigger guard there if you wish. Now Speaking of trigger, you do have, like I say, plenty of space for your armoured glove for airsoft, and the trigger on this is really good. So, taking the magazine now, as you can see, this is an airsoft mag, not real one, YouTube. And we can now check the trigger. It's right at the wall. I have mine tuned so that it is 5 mil, which is pretty much what it was out the box of travel. You get a nice clean break. And your reset is one, two, three, four. With basically right after that, the fifth one is going to be right fully extended. It's a really nice trigger and a very nice tactile break and reset. Now, moving forward, we get to the second little discrepancy between this and the real steel. That is the bolt release slash hold open. Now, on the real one, this will be a wider and more squarer 
bullet panel with a little piece down here. It would have the square diamond checkering on it itself. Now, of course, for Airsoft, as this uses the exact same trigger group that's in the, their Noveski, their Mark 18, and their full-size Daniel Defense, in order to keep the cost down, they kept it the same, so you get the same. And it works pretty much as intended. And because it is, I would say, mil-spec in its diameter and that, if you own the Marui uh, Badass, I would say am ambidextrous bolt release, little lever that would go underneath through your trigger well, you can easily install that on this without having any issues, just FYI. Now, you see your steel mag release as well as this being made out of steel. But let's have a look at the mag itself. So, as you can see here with the magazine, you've got your Daniel Defense, you've got your address, and your official serial number right here on the magwell. The magwell is cut a la M4A1 slash Mark 18 with the angle of cut, and it has the nice flair to it, just like those two. It's really nice. Now, let's talk magazines, shall we? So we'll put this down for now. Here is the magazine. Now these are the T8 Lancer PMAG. It features the correct markings. You've got your 300 black here, your Law M or Law Mag as it is, and it is really nice with the L5. Of course, you do get the mock rounds in there but that is just a wrap around the gas tank. It's crazy, you can just see there, you get 300 black out on that side. It's really nice. Now, to fill the gas in this, you would push this down here and slide that out. One thing I will tell you is be careful because that little name tag here will pop out and it usually does in gameplay, or I should say when you're going to charge this at the arena, it will pop out. Now, as you can see, you can just see this plastic here. That is your, um, how to say, bullets, and that the wrap for the bullets. You can easily take this uh, tank out, rip that off. I believe several companies are making um, what they call 3D stickers, which basically means you get sticker for this side, one for that, one for the back strap to give you the illusion of rounds at the back, and one for the tips here at the front. Now. I'm waiting for them to come out. When they do, I'm gonna fit one because I do like that idea than this. I've not taken this one out for the moment, just for that FYI. I don't know if I can get it on camera, but you can see like when you it shows when you've got the overspray from your gas and it leaks in, the oil on that, you can just see inside. It's just not a great look. But as this is completely compatible with the Tokyo Marui mags, you can swap Either one, you can use the uh, Double Eagle. It will run any of the Marui MWSZ mags in this weapon perfectly fine. Now, capacity. The tank on this is pretty much identical in dimensions internally to the Tokyo Marui, so you are getting around about three full mags of BBs. This will hold 35 rounds, but only put 30 in. Many of the issues I've seen with people online are basically saying that their nozzles are breaking and that is because they overfill the mag, which means the follower here is either gonna break or is under so much pressure that it can't move out the way of the loading arm on the nozzle and you're basically pushing up on that and going to crack your nozzle. So, as a rule of thumb, 30 rounds, no more, and leave it at that with this for BB. Now with your gas, like I say, three full mags, 90 rounds on one charge. As Marui mags go, that's brilliant. And like I say, these are cheap and easy to get, and they do work. Now, let's move back. We do have the 300 logo there in a mock bullet to identify that this was on the real steel chambered in 300 blackout. And moving forward, we do get the Daniel Defense modern handguard. Instead of having the six like you would have on the Mark 18, they now move to four screws, which is quite nice. You do get QD sling point here, Mark 1's here, and you do have M lock on the three, six, and nine. This sling point is also mirrored on the other side. There is M lock here on the 10 and two o'clock positions, but the ones here at the um, five and seven o'clock are fake. They're not real M lock. They're just there for cooling. You can just about, if I can get the light, make out the mock gas block in there to give it that real look. Now, okay, so along the top we do have our Picatinny rail, which you can see here. 
and that's quite nice. It allows you plenty enough room to fit whatever optics you want. But I've noticed something. You do get front and rear flip up iron sights, but they look very familiar. Hmm. Insert the Chris Vector. Oh, look. They are basically the exact same iron sights minus the Chris logo, but they are the exact same iron sights. Looks like SEMA got them from the same bin as Crytek. And that is perfectly fine. Come, to be honest with you, they're really good. Nice, positive flip-up sights there. If you need them, great as backup. And you can co-witness with the T1 that I've got on here, style optics, it will co-witness through. So that's really nice, I do like it. The rear is adjustable for windage and range. As you can see, you have your aperture flip. So you can go for reaching out or in, but to be honest with you, you're gonna be leaving it on the CQB because this is a CQB gun anyway. Now, moving forward to the front, we do have the Daniel Defense Linear Compensator. Now, as you can see, this is awesome, a nice replica of the Daniel Defense one, and is mounted to the outer barrel by a 14 millimeter CCW thread, so you can easily just unthread this, no problem, and put any muzzle device you want. I kind of like this one, because when you fill up your magazine for the first time, and you get a brand new fresh mag of gas, you will hear a nice pop for every BB in that mag coming out the front here. It will give it a nice little crack sound. It's really good and it just adds to that effect. It's something very similar to a sound hog. And that's what it was designed for in the real steel. In the real steel, this would push all the gases, the flash and the concussion, let's put it that way, sound, forward towards the target rather than at your colleagues at the side of you or your teammates. And that, to be honest with you, is more important for you because you're the one shooting them and like I say it's just better for hearing safe and apparently it really does work so that's kind of cool now let's flip this around and let's have a look here so everything has been mirrored on the handguard as you can see the QD sling points are there and we move to our nice plain I would say magwell you do have your mag release here this is steel as well and you do have your polymer dust cover. Now, I don't know if it picks it up well on camera, but that is basically not great because it's smudged. Like, SEMA, what the hell are you doing? Now, taking that out, you're gonna be looking at this side anyway, which has the lovely laser engraved Daniel Defense on the bolt carrier, which is full steel anyway. And you do have the markings here for if you ever do wanna put a, a full ambidextrous fire control group, which again, on the real steel, it does come ambidextrous. You can do, they do sell them for the Marui and they'll fit in here. Now, I don't know if it'll make it, but there you are. You do have your EMG on the lower receiver, little stamp in there, as well as all the other markings that you need. So, now that we've gone on the overview, let's take it outside and let's see how good she is. Okay, I'm using green gas and 0.25 gram BBs. Okay, so what does that give us? So we have an average of 312.3 FPS uh, with a max of 320 on your first shot. That's normal for any GBBR, but yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's take it back to about 10 meters. Let's see how she performs. Wow. Okay, let's test the Texas Star. <sighs> oh my God. Okay, so. 
With that accuracy, I am really impressed. It is an absolutely outstanding accuracy out of the box. Can't complain at all with that. I mean, you've got to remember this is only a seven inch in a barrel and you're getting what a 11 inch Tokyo Marui high-end out the box experience will give you. So yes, it's absolutely great. Can it be better? Of course, you can always do better and we'll get to how you can do that in a second. So let's do what we always do. Let's start looking at the internals. Okay, so straight away, you will notice that that looks similar to a Marui Zet fire control group, but it is not. Now I have my little magnet. Now straight away, you can see the bolt catch is steel. The takedown pins, which are not mil spec, they are Marui spec, are steel. That's both of them. The retaining for the buffer is aluminium, but the entire fire control group is steel. So, yes, you know, which is great, except for the selector switch. So that's nice. All the bits inside are steel, but this little bit on the outside is aluminium or zinc, as you would say. The trigger is steel. Now, with that, you can see here you do have your roller, which is very Marui-esque, and there is a few little options. Now, like I said, this is a premium fire control group, and you can see that because it says adjust here. Now, what does it adjust? Well, you're gonna have to go on the internet and find out. If you guys have watched the unboxing video, you will see that little card with the QR. You can take a picture of that and check it yourself. It takes you straight to a product registration page, and not to the manual. There is no manual for this. So what is Adjust here for? Well, you'll have to watch a few actual videos in Korean. I believe there's one that shows a detailed breakdown of the fire control group, but it doesn't really give you any indication of what they do because it's not got English subtitles. There's no on-screen prompts or anything like that. Just FYI, something to be, I would say, made aware of. So. What does it do? Well, let's tell you. This here is your hammer power. So the amount of power when you pull that trigger going forward and smacking onto the gas mag and also the amount of power it takes to reset it, okay? This basically works as a way of A, controlling your rate of fire, B, the amount of gas discharged on every, how would say, trigger pull. So every time I do that, it basically will I would say, give a little bit more, the more strength you add to it by, I would say, turning this in clockwise, you will add more power counterclockwise, you will remove the power, so you can tune it to your magazines and to your kind of temperature. You might need in the cold weather a little bit lighter because there's not that much power, so you can tune that down to running cold weather a lot better. And as third-party magazines have different knocker valves, etc. You can basically get it to run on the magazines that you use. It's a really cool feature. I really like that. Now, some people say it controls the FPS. I've not really seen much of evidence of that. Yes, there's more gas, but that's mainly controlled by the nozzle and the, the rocket valve in that will shut at the same rate regardless of how much gas goes forward. It really is crazy, but I'm not saying it doesn't, but it is one of those. Now, at the bottom of the trigger, I don't know if I can get that on, but you can just see a grub screw there. That is for your trigger brake. So you would put a two millimeter hex key in there and you would adjust it. The more you adjust in, you will adjust the trigger brake either way. Now, if you do mess with the trigger brake, you will need to mess with the length of pull. Now, like I say, this is stock length of pull, but just down in there, I'm not sure if I can get that, but in here, there is a tiny little, there it is, the little silver bit there. You see a little two millimeter grub screw in there. You use the same Allen key and you adjust. Adjusting that will basically bring the trigger further in. So the more you add, the closer it comes to the rear. The less you add, the more it will go forward. Okay, just to bear that one in mind, you will use those two to adjust it. Now this has become very popular in Airsoft now with Unicorn and with Guns Modify releasing their own versions of this. So 
Good on Seema for leading, leading the way with T8 and doing that. But other than that, this is a really great system. Now, the buffer, like I say, is not true mil spec. As you can see, mine's dirty now, not clean mine since I bought it. And that has the T8 logo on there. It's their short stroke buffer kit. So it comes with their correct short little spring. That's all condensed in. There are several spaces down inside the buffer tube that have been inserted to get it that stupidly high rate of fire of around about 1,198 rounds a minute. You will lose velocity with that sort of speed, but bloody hell. Yeah. Now, moving on, we'll get to our bulk carrier group. As you can see, this is one big, nice bulk carrier group. And you've got steel body, aluminium weight, just like the other Maru, so you can swap that out to tune it. And you do have your Marui style of, I would say, nozzle. Now, one thing I can show you on mine, which annoys me, but one of the QC sides, I would say. With the T8 nozzle, you can see here, you're supposed to have this spring here that pushes this spring load forward. Basically, it's meant so that when this bolt carrier travels down your buffer tube and hits your full metal chamber, that will take some of the actual, uh, I would say, impact cushion in it so you don't break your nozzle as much but also allow the correct amount of penetration to your booking okay so that's why that is important now with mine it kind of likes to stick to the rear i've noticed when i use it due to the absolute high recoil of this it will absolutely i would say stretch out but when you're looking at it like this it's just a bit of qc now your roller is steel but like I say, your tail weight is not. You do have a adjustment screw here to release your nozzle. That's all there. It's a lot easier than using an E-clip. And you do have your Marui style of, I would say, plate here at the top that would normally, as that goes back, that will slam it forward and push it back there. It's just one of those. Now, as you can see, you do have your laser and markings there, and you do have your ratchet here for your forward assist. The forward assist on this does actually work. Just FYI, it will work. Please don't do it if you've got a crushed BB. It's not funny. Like I say, you have your charging handle, which is Daniel Defense marked, and will fit in any of your Marui style of firearms, which is really cool. So, let's move on to this the upper receiver. One thing I will state between the upper and lower, these are CNC milled receivers. I can show you that before I get to that. Easily why? Because there is no seam line down the middle. You can check on the inside as well. There is no seam line. These were milled out of a single piece, which is really important. And that also allows for better fitment and finish inside. You've not got slightly different variations in each half, etc., to worry about. So definitely very good. Now, inside you will see the exclusive proprietary T8 quick adjust hop unit. Now you would use a flathead screwdriver, turning it counterclockwise to add hop and clockwise to remove it. And you will notice that little grub screw there. This little grub screw next to it is your QD release. You undo that grub screw, this whole unit pops out, and you can pull out your inner barrel and your hop straight away through the inside of the gun without having to take your handguard off and having an armorous tool and all the rest of it. Now, someone has already done this during the QC because if I can pull this up, I'm not sure if I can get this on, but you can just see the slight marks around the crown. Someone has actually knocked this in and taken it out. Whoop. And like that, I'm doing exactly the same. But um, yeah, not very good from SEMA in that respect, and I would knock a little bit of points off them for that. Like, come on, dude. You've got your dust cover. You can see that it's slightly blurred. You've got that. Really? But hey. Now, let's get this all put back together, and let's di uh, discuss. Okay, if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you see but you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video and hit that like button to help out with the algorithm. 
From there, if you want to go one step further in the age of airsoft demonetization on YouTube, you can use the YouTube thanks button and donate to the channel directly. That helps me put bigger and better weapons on the table a lot quicker than me just doing it myself. Now, whether you do or you don't, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart just for watching and subscribing. But for everything you guys do, it's thanks to you that I'm able to do this sort of stuff in the first place. So, huge thank you. Now, let's go in to final thoughts. So, basically, SEMA and T8 set out to bring you the best possible out-the-box experience, giving you a high-end, upgraded, you-don't-have-to-do-anything type of build. And with that, they succeeded. Coming in at £600, this is the exact same price as the Tokyo Marui URGI. And to be honest with you, this is a really better build. Out the box, this really is. Now, don't get me wrong, the URGI is phenomenal. And because it's Tokyo Marui, you've got over 10 years of aftermarket parts. With this, this is really T8 sort of stuff. Yes, if you want, you can swap out the trigger box to a unicorn, etc. Now that everyone's copying this design, yes, you can. But you do have to remember that that might need a change in bull, or you might need to do other things, etc., etc. And, well, there's your kind of never-ending nightmare when it comes to having some proprietary parts, such as T8. But what it does mean is, if you leave it stock, you're not going to be disappointed. You are getting a high-end performance. You can improve the grouping size, I would expect, by giving it an even tighter inner bore, if you wish. Um, maybe a unicorn in a barrel. It fits anything that's Marui gas blowback spec. Same with their bookings. You can change the booking out, etc. There are lots of little improvements that you can do that you're not just stuck behind a proprietary wall. But overall, this is just an absolutely outstanding value for what you're getting. Now, how does it compare to, say, a true Marui clone like the Double Eagle? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned to find that one out. I am currently filming the video for that as you're watching this, so it shouldn't be much longer to wait. Now, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really excited as I'm filming this. It's going to be a really cool video. But back to this. It's a really amazing build. The linear compensator looks kind of cool. kind of gives you that integral suppressed look, even though it's not. And it gives you that nice little sound effect on your fresh mag. It's really cool. It, it kind of has a bit of a, not just form, but function. And if you don't like it, you can strap on any of your Tracy units, any muzzle device that's 14mm CCW for Airsoft will fit this. So that's kind of cool. And like I say, you are getting steel bolt carrier. You are getting full steel internals. You're getting all the, the equipment that you would normally upgrade to anyway, and a type bore in a barrel. And TA are pretty decent at what they do. So, yeah, this is a phenomenal piece of kit. To put it the best way... When I'm not testing a weapon at my local stomping ground of Halo Mill, this is the weapon I'm going to be taking from now on. I'm really happy. When Daniel Defense released this to take on the Rattler, did they succeed? Yes. Quite simply, yes. The Rattler is amazing, but it is a lot heavier. It's shorter, meaning in the real steel world, the ballistics are not as efficient or not as decent as this. And being heavier... It is a bit more to look around with the Rattler, whereas this is lightweight. You probably have a decent trigger in the real steel world, so you can put whatever you want in there. It's really cool, and basically, it just looks amazing, you know? And in the military and law enforcement, you can see why they're going for it, because they have millions of AR-15 styles and parts which are going to be fully compatible with this out the box so that's kind of cool in the real steel world and in airsoft like i say this will fit any of your marui mags so whatever fits a marui mws whether it's guns modify double eagle you know tokyo marui themselves all these you can use them whatever generation the mags they'll just fit and feed no problem so awesome again now I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments down below. So please let me know. Do you like the PDW or are you more of the full size or say the SIG? Let me know. I've been the Middle Age Gamer. You guys have been amazing and I'll see you in the next one.